to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that in the entire lifetime of any individual for that matter not necessarily a believer any individual that is privileged to walk upon the face of this earth the bible lets us know that god is not only the god of all flesh but he's also the god of times and the god of seasons we have dealt with the law of seasons please do well to listen to that teaching and that in your pursuit and your journey towards the knowledge of God, towards fulfilling your divine call and assignment towards destiny. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the possibility exists that you can be challenged by situations and circumstances that attempt to impede your journey, number one, or attempt to fight you or attempt to stop you from finishing that journey or even attempt to stop you from starting the journey the bible is not silent as to the fact that these possibilities exist hallelujah yeah. the second information that is very interesting and important is that no single person wearing a mortal body is immune from the reality of these seasons that the only thing we are the guarantee that we are given in christ is that we can sustain the grace and the intelligence to rise above them but that in a man's lifetime it must be captured in your human experience seasons that represent pain seasons that represent discomfort seasons where defeat looks imminent this is a reality that we see even in the life of Jesus, our pattern man. The Bible tells us to look on to Jesus, calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him. The next word after that is endurance. The Bible says he endured. You would think that because we are dealing with Jesus, you would not have to use such an expression for one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why will the fountain of wisdom need to endure? Why will he who is the captain of the host of heaven, why would you associate the creator with that word endurance? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross then number two it says despise the shame two things he did that the bible says is very instructive that in following jesus we must pay attention to the fact that even jesus was not immune from pain and shame now most people in church most believers in the body of christ have not been taught the spiritual systems put in place to deal with these seasons and these times in as much as we teach on victory in as much as we teach on the invincibility of the believer as far as his association with the christ is concerned we must be honest and matured enough to expose believers to the things that befall all men and to prepare their hearts so that if and when these seasons come the believers can sustain stamina to be able to go through these seasons and then return victorious are we together now so for instance we've had believers who have gone through unpleasant situations say during the pandemic and after the pandemic people have lost money who love jesus with all their hearts people have lost loved ones without answers 
there are people who the equation of their lives and destinies in spite of their committal to the things of God it doesn't seem to add up and many of them continue to ask secret questions and that is the responsibility of a shepherd in Christ to be able to bring perspective and light to issues even difficult issues like this are we together first Peter chapter 4 and verse 12 media let's walk together please first Peter chapter 4 from verse 12 to 16 Apostle Peter is teaching us now and here's what he had to say beloved he said so he's talking to those who are in Christ beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you he says as though some strange thing happened to you this is a very powerful information from a matured Christian who is an apostle. He's teaching and training you that you must be able to build a level of strength and stamina in the spirit that if and when you are confronted with uncomfortable situations that you do not address them as though some, some mysterious thing were happening to you. It says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and god rested upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified 15 but none of you let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief so there are different dimensions of suffering now and as an evil doer or as a busybody in other men's matters last verse these are various things that have sufferings attached to them yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf scripture number two psalm 61 from verse one to three this is the cry of one who has been put down in life this is a distress a distress cry coming from a sincere heart unto god hear my cry oh god he says attend unto my prayer verse 2 from the end of the earth will i cry unto you in other words no matter where you are oh god hear me when my heart is overwhelmed hmm, it says lead me to the rock that is higher than i for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy so the bible lets us know that it is possible listen carefully it is possible for a believer to go through a season in his life in the life of a ministry in the life of an organization in the life of a family in the life of a nation and in the life of a continent where it seems as though the word of God is not producing the kind of result that you believe for it to produce. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity. Everyone say the day of adversity. December 25th in Nigeria and across the body of Christ is generally, it's been a day that has been earmarked to celebrate Christmas. Is that true? Wherever you are across the world, once it's December 25th, usually people celebrate Christmas. There are days earmarked to celebrate Easter. Um, other religions like, like our Islamic brothers have days where they can select to celebrate different, you know, activities. Other religions have days. Now, the Bible is telling you that is not the only day you should pay attention to. That there is another day, please give it to us, called the day of adversity. Not the hour of adversity. 
not the minute of adversity day there does not just mean 24 hour it means season there is a season of adversity and he's giving you an information up hand that if you faint in the day of adversity it is because your strength is small it is not because the adversity naturally should sustain the power to overwhelm you but you did not build strength for that day are we still together In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, we'll begin our reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he began to pray for them that they be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Everybody say strengthened with might in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, uh -huh, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasseth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Next verse. It says, Now unto him. Hmm who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, but all that is according to the power that works in us. Not just according to his power, according to the capacity that works in us. Last verse says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. So the Bible encourages us to be strengthened with might in the inner man. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, again, Apostle Paul is teaching here, and he says, Let us not be weary in well doing. Do not be weary. He's mentioning a word here now. That there is also a there is a relationship, a strange relationship between weariness and well doing. That a man can be involved in well doing and yet be weary. He leaves you with an information that provides comfort. He says, For in due season we will reap if if there is a condition, if we faint not. That means even if you have been um, committed to well-doing, if you faint, you may not survive the times where the harvest will come for you. I do not know one great man who became great properly with the dignity of kingdom integrity who does not have a story of these seasons of adversity, whether in ministry, whether in business, in fact, the Bible lists the credentials of the kinds of people you should follow. It says, follow them who through faith and patience. If you find results that did not come through faith and patience, it's advising you to run away because something is wrong with that result. Are we together now? Follow them, he says, who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is very important for us to know that adversity is a reality that will attempt every life, every family sooner or later. You know, by the privilege of what I do, I'm exposed to people's painful situation and the most obvious and I would say the most um, challenging, if I'm right on that, is anything that has to do with the loss of loved ones i am exposed literally every day to someone or some family that is attempting to make sense over the loss of a loved one or over loss of money or loss of a job some some kind of situation that represents adversity and over the years i've had to look for a scriptural and meaningful explanation to give perspective to those events 
because I, I wish I can tell you you have all the answers at those times but there are times you will be challenged with things that you will exhaust your intelligence from border to border and not find any answer that makes sense to such a situation now there are people who fail and go through things in life because of um, obvious disobedience to kingdom principles as far as victory is concerned but I have seen in my life that there are others who you cannot exactly pinpoint anything wrong as far as they are complying to kingdom principles in as much as we can see is concerned and yet yet I have seen great people who love Jesus Christ pass on to glory painfully so I have seen people who love Jesus with all their hearts go through tragedies I have seen families who love Jesus with all their hearts I've seen patients sick who love Jesus with all their hearts and they died quoting scripture they died saying by his stripes I am healed I've seen people who continue to declare that my tomorrow is great and they went excuse me they went to their place of work and returned back with a sack letter I have seen people who have trusted God to make sense of every area of their lives finances spiritual life marriage relationships parenting you know their jobs all kinds of situations the Bible says listen very carefully according to Psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 all men all men without exemption go through these seasons of weariness of adversity of frustration hardships challenges mishap and so on and so forth here's what it says psalm 27 13 and 14 i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living verse 14 it says wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord scripture number two is a popular one isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 and 30 if you do not know this scripture it's a sign that there is a measure of laziness in your spiritual life because usually if you are one who is committed to prayer and fasting no matter how weak you should have come across this scripture is a classic as far as the ministry of prayer and fasting is concerned the Bible says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength now the reality is in verse 30 please read with me ready one to read even the youth shall faint <laughs> ladies and gentlemen look at what you are reading very carefully he's not talking about backsliding here this has nothing to do with backsliding this is the reality that befall men by reason of wearing a mortal body that there is the emotional wear and tear that can befall men now you know that the glory of the young people is their strength and yet the bible says as far as this season of adversity is concerned even the youth shall faint and be weary and it says the young men shall utterly fall so it is true that men can lose strength it is true that people can go through seasons of adversity i just feel like defining that word adversity please write it down adversity from the word university just remove uni and put ad adversity what is adversity i wrote down here a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune a state of serious or continued difficulty a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune so when we talk about adversity we talk about a state of continued difficulty 
or some form of misfortune hardships challenges mishaps you would imagine that these kinds of things should never happen to a believer and as far as the word of god is concerned we continue to declare and release our faith for days of victory but the reality of the life of a man upon this earth is that sooner or later something of this sort will either come to happen to you or to someone who is connected to you you know i've had the honor and the privilege of standing before many dead bodies in my life many some praying for them to come back to life others just standing and looking at the reality of the other side of life and i can tell you this every time i stand before a dead body i look at myself and everybody here or everybody standing there and i tell myself in truth the difference between us and this body if christ tarries is time of course i know you will not believe me time every dead body you see was once alive to see another dead body are we together now how about people who lost money there are people who have lost millions and billions of naira and dollars in business and not all of them were corrupt and wicked and foolish people no some of them were sincere people like the gentleman i was so touched when he was the gentleman who received the breakthrough now you are attempting to give god all your salary which is a huge sacrifice and then some wind or rain comes to take away your roof listen job the book of job there's no time to go there but the book of job is a classic and and i i bless the lord for the fact that that book was represented in the bible it's not an extra biblical text so it qualifies to be called all scripture were inspired by god and it is also profitable the bible says for doctrine for rebuke for establishment in righteousness that the man of god be mature whole not missing in anything the bible tells us about this strange man called job how that he feared god and eschewed evil the wealthiest man in the east the bible records then the bible now flips to the realm of the spirit and begins to give us a very interesting picture that one time the sons of god came together and satan was in their midst now i'm not here tonight to argue the theological debate as to whether it was um satan still has access to the presence of god and so on and so forth this is not my assignment tonight but one thing i can tell you is the fact that he is not called angel or lucifer should already tell you that is already his fallen state are we together hmm. already we see the ministry of killing stealing and destroying with him and yet the bible says the sons of god were gathered and satan was in their midst and he said has thou considered my servant job and satan began a very dangerous proposition does he serve you for nothing have you not fortified him created a garrison around his life in other words who would not serve you with the kind of defense and protection give me permission he said to touch him and he says you can go then just make sure his life is spared then the bible says there was a certain day let me show you that scripture it always does the tragic story started with a certain day it says there was a certain day that means job woke up in the morning and said this is the day the lord has made thank you jesus not knowing that by evening he will be on the ground with dust on his body many people left their homes in peace and returned back in tears lord this is not my covenant with you this is not what i planned for and the bible tells us that this man called job back to back now i don't want to scare you i wish you had the courage to allow me read job chapter one and see the back to back testimonies that this man his children were blessing the lord something happened and for all of the tragedies there was one person left to come back and give him the story sir 
just to tell you your cattle everything is dead sir to tell you your sons and your daughters there is no man i know no man i know who may have gone through the kind of situation job went through within that time range everything happened within the day the bible says job sat on the ground and removed his clothes and job did not count god unfaithful he did not even the bible says that he fell down on the ground and do you know what job did he worshiped and worshiped where was your tears and worshiped knowing that all my children dead my business dead everything dead the bible says job arose he rent his mantle he shaved his hair he fell down and worshiped we like to laugh at people and say old testament but most people don't have the courage to do this even with the holy ghost indwelling in them that you can see these kinds of things and sit down on the ground what kind of song are you going to sing sing it for me let me hear the song you sing after this kind of situation many of us you misplaced ten thousand is there it's just that you can't find it you are angry you've you've insulted god you know the you know the money is there it's not like they stole it it's just that you can't figure out where you kept it and the anger even in church you can't raise a song and here is a man who has lost everything and the bible says he bowed down and worshiped and worshiped can i tell you this every man under the sound of my voice will sooner or later be confronted with seasons and situations that will test your conviction and test everything you know and believe about god i wish i can tell you it will never happen but i'll be lying to you provided you are alive one day there is a day of adversity i was preaching somewhere and i gave a reference about jesus going to the other side and the bible says jesus said let us go to the other side and when he began that journey it was jesus that said let us go so you can be sure that his all-seeing eye already saw the end from beginning and yet as soon as they started that journey the bible says there arose a storm of wind with jesus as the visionaire with jesus as the one who sold that idea to go to the other side the bible says the wind was so boisterous water was getting into the boat and jesus was sleeping the disciples were angry and they had to go and tap him they said carest thou not that we perish are you not concerned that we can die and the bible says when he got up he rebuked the wind he said shalom be still he rebuked the winds and everything was calm and he challenged them for their unbelief and they the rest of the story continues but forget that jesus overcame the fact that the storm did not fear him are we together now you would think the spirits would not even dare come near him one of the most scary scripture for me in the bible was what happened in um, I think that should be Matthew chapter 4 the temptation of Jesus the Bible says after he was baptized the Spirit of God drove him to the wilderness he did not go to the wilderness to drink and smoke he went to pray Jesus as the word and prayed and fasted for 40 days guess who he saw first when he was done Satan how do you see Satan as the first person to welcome you after praying and fasting for 40 days you would think the prayer will drive him but the prayer was bringing him the tempter 
the bible will usually tell you what capacity satan is coming as whether as a deceiver as what now in this capacity he came as a tempter and he looked at jesus eyeball to eyeball do you look at jesus and not shake and fall down after fasting and prayer with the power of the holy ghost the word of god anointed again what should make someone powerful that was not in him and yet satan walked as if he was not seeing him he said mr man you are hungry admit it you are anointed but you are hungry uh, i i know that you are you created the heavens and the earth but you need food now and jesus did not say no i know I'm, I'm the lion of the tribe no satan discerned he was not there but he said you are hungry let me show you that you still you have a problem with all your anointing there is hunger how do you bring such a demeaning statement to such El Shaddai the man who created the heavens and the earth and he says turn this stone to bread and Jesus said no my agenda is greater than my individual satisfaction it is not about me the next temptation the Bible says he took him to the top of the temple a place of worship with people praying there and yet satan stood at the top of the church and said mr man i'm dropping you here fall down for it is written so don't think i'm ignorant he shall put his angels charge over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against the stone don't forget who satan is talking to here jesus so don't be carried away by the fact that Michael threw him down from heaven. He's standing with Jesus now and he's talking to Jesus as if Michael were greater than him. Number three, the Bible says he picked him up. Not that he said, follow me. He held him and took him into an exceeding high. The, the Bible says he took him more. How do you take somebody? He took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Because every kingdom, there are three things that make a kingdom. A, every kingdom must have glory. It must have the power and authority that backs it, represented by the scepter. Are we together now? And it must have inhabitants there. And the Bible says he showed them the glory. And here's what he said, verse 9. Satan now. You don't know how stubborn he is all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me and jesus said verse 10 get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve then the bible makes a very scary statement it says and the devil leaveth him in fact one synoptic account said he left him for a season that in other words don't think as i'm going you will not see me again mm -mm. provided you left heaven and came to it you will find me the next time satan would come he did not come directly to him again he came through one of the most disciplined and emotional person called peter he chose one who was the leader over the people and he manipulated peter's compassion to beg jesus not to die he said jesus you know don't don't go to the cross don't do this and and he rebuked him and said get be behind me satan peter said me i just finished talking to you about the church i'm i'm and he says satan desire to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren satan left and said you saw me the next time satan will come people were having dinner and he came through the treasurer you see why finance department in many ministries must pray like prayer warriors too there is nobody in any ministry who not who should not be a prayer warrior don't say mine is just to join why are you pray because the devil will use anybody and anything are we together satan came through judas i hope you know the, the goal of judas was not to destroy jesus that's why he could not do anything with the money the goal was to make money from jesus 
Jesus was misusing privileges, financial opportunities were passing him up and down. And he said, do you know what? Let me last with you and give you Jesus and then leave him to deal with you and show you his savior. So he was surprised when Jesus gave himself and he said, no, this was not the plan. And he went and hung himself. Don't think Judas was a bad man. No. For Jesus to trust Judas with money, he was one of the most trusted people there. <laughs> you know, I was laughing. Someone shared a very interesting story that kidnappers kidnapped someone's child and they demanded for 50 million and the family called them and said all they have is 50,000. <laughs> and the kidnappers insulted them and off the phone in anger and said if they don't bring up to 5 million, they will finish the people. And the man said, honestly, there's nothing they can do. They should just kill <laughs> Are we together in other words we've done our best whatever it is at least we're sure he's born again <laughs> Let him. amen all men can be weary people can go through challenges in their lives and so it is not unusual the bible says but let me tell you this there are basically three reasons and I want you to listen very carefully. There are three reasons that cause or three factors that are responsible for these seasons of frustration, hardship, challenges. I want you to listen very carefully. Every one of us seated under the sound of my voice would have gone through or will go through one or more of these seasons. Are you ready? The first reason why people become weak, why people become fatigued spiritually and otherwise, why people become discouraged, the very first reason, listen carefully, is what I, I term the deference of hope or hope deferred. Write it down, please. disappointed expectations can dampen people's spiritual lives disappointed expectations can dampen people's finances you put your money in the business or an investment and it crashes and you're in trouble you try to buy a land eventually you find out there's a court case around that land and they tell you they will get back to you or you submit your cv and for a long time two three years you know sometimes i wonder when people share testimonies here and then they say after i did this and that or maybe when the word came a job i applied for for three four years now called me can you imagine how long that the, the issue is not the miracle the issue is the endurance to have waited three four years are we together the difference of hope the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Write it down, please. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And when the desire cometh, the Bible says it is a tree of life. Please look at me. Do you know why many young people in this country are already beginning to face medical conditions that you would think only people in their late 50s and 60s right now you can see a young boy in his early 20s having the same symptom with someone who is probably 65 seven years because of hope deferred haven't spent five six seven ten years multiple programs in school most of them live with joy in their heart expecting to get a job immediately and from that time ten years 15 years, 20 years, no job, no nothing. Financial issues, marital issues, fertility issues. I think one of the most depressing of all issues, in my opinion, as I have seen, is the issue of fruitfulness. 
where people will dance and celebrate everybody will celebrate with them speak prophetic words and 10 15 years later the couple are still waiting especially you see let me tell you this especially if you are in a position where you also have to minister to others i've had the privilege to cry and pray with many preachers and sometimes when you see them cry their heart over these issues it can be hope deferred can be frustrating you will need the grace and the strength of god if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. number two very quickly what is the second reason now pay attention why people's faith is dampened why their zest and their zeal goes down the second is attacks and persecution write it down please the second reason why believers become discouraged why they do not have the strength to continue is attacks and persecution now listen very carefully attacks and persecution very very serious james chapter 1 please from verse 1 to 4 i pray someone is learning tonight james 4 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 i meant to say forgive me james 1 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 it says james a servant of god and of our lord jesus christ to the 12 stripes which are scattered abroad greetings uh-huh it says my brethren so he's speaking to believers look up please count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this there is an information that you have to know that the trying of your faith listen carefully walk at patience verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect walk that ye may be perfect the word perfect there is mature an entire wanting nothing count it all joy listen to me many of you here have tasted greatness at different levels in politics in government in family life in spirituality ministry whatever it is and i can tell you there is a cross there is a burden of greatness that most people do not know if most people understand the burden that is associated with greatness you will not hurry into greatness you will rather pray for strength and stamina are we together now it is easy to be carried away by the glamour and the prestige that is around the great and not know that every great man is also carrying a cross ask those in business ask those in politics you know many times we complain that politicians are corrupt people and all of that but you imagine someone who gets a position and there are over 130 people connected both extended and nuclear family hoping to eat from that position and everybody is calling and saying my uncle you are a wicked man you are a devil you can help me what is this and now this man has this to deal the temptation to already go there and begin to touch resources is already there because of that reality let me tell you this greatness needs a skill for you to remain there in fact the easiest part of the equation of greatness is becoming it remaining great is harder than becoming great we all aspire to rise to different levels of greatness in the kingdom whether in ministry there are people every time i pray for people ministers apostle i want to be like you apostle i want to do this and sometimes i i feel guilty trying to lay hands on those people because i'm asking i hope i'm not destroying this destiny by exposing you to an anointing whose battle you know nothing about every mantle has the battle that confronts it you want to be ceo in africa are you ready to stand the attacks and the charms and the wizardry and the witchcraft that follows greatness i want to go into oil and gas congratulations are you ready for the biases that go through that sector i want to be a politician do you know what it means to live every day with threats for the rest of your political career someone is eyeing you and vowing if you are alive by next week and yet you have to smile through the storms can i tell you the great deserve your uploads most people have no idea 
that greatness is a burden many times when god does not bring it to a life of an individual it is not him it is not wickedness it is his mercy looking at you and say let me not wreck this fragile destiny that is not yet fortified with knowledge and so he withholds certain things to let you grow hallelujah i remember many years as a man of god many years ago um i i i really had problems I'm, you know I'm, I'm one person who doesn't like trouble at all i want to make sure i call everybody respond to everybody do everything to everybody and it was wearing me out i didn't have time for myself people would call me 12 1 a.m and you know express their disappointment that i'm resting you know and sometimes they try to bully you by saying great men you know they are praying through the night what you know and so on and so forth and at a point in time i had to obtain grace from god to be delivered by him so that i don't become a victim of all these things but i can tell you greatness comes at a cost i remember a gentleman who i think he he lost some, I, don't, I don't know which of the relatives and for more than one month that gentleman kept sending me text messages apostle i will not let you rest until you give me an answer as to why this kind of thing happened to my family i agree that i'm not close to god but I know you are close to God. Ask him for me. And he meant it. Now I know you can laugh at the gentleman until you go through something that wrecks your destiny and puts and almost a full stop. Attacks and persecution. For as long as you are not great, your watch is okay. For as long as you are not great a man of god says nobody researches failure people only research success when you fail nobody will go and check and say i need to find out why you have failed except you succeed then you find all kinds of things the moment you succeed something is wrong with your watch it's supposed to be worn well something is wrong with your trouser you didn't you know hold it well something is everything is wrong with the great it is the burden of greatness are you learning something very very important attacks and persecution Jesus himself said that in this life you will receive cars and houses and etc with persecution with persecution I'm telling you this because you see the truths that you are hearing from many of you will lift you above the current realms of success you are experiencing and for many others will bring you into that realm but as soon as you are done celebrating the glory and the grace of god in that realm you must be taught the ethics of remaining it's a very delicate realm it's a realm that can wreck you emotionally have you not heard of great people who committed suicide why should a billionaire commit suicide with all the money there why should someone holding a great position remember when the people were arguing and were insulting moses are you the only one god will speak to we want to hear him too moses went to god and said these people will worry me and god said all right let me speak to them separate yourselves rule number one for what that's the condition to hear him after three days they were angrily waiting at the mountain and then he came in cloud and fire and thund thundered into their brains and their stubborn heads as soon as that happened do you know what they said listen listen they said god don't ever talk to us again from today talk to moses we will believe him but if that did not happen many of them would not believe that god's not talking to them was an act of his mercy they didn't have the capacity to hear his voice and see the fire the flame of his glory they would not listen dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaskade, Bashkanakata, Branda, Kate, 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 K
Chete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke neka ta. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 